Lyle, question of the day. Yes. I told you we're going to talk about something a little bit insidious today. Okay. Insidious. Insid yes. I cannot get this word right. <laughs> okay. Alright. Ins insidious. Something. Yeah. Okay. What is anti-trinitarianism? It is anti being against trinitarianism. So against trinitarianism. That's the answer. That's I a don't. terrible dictionary answer. You are a terrible, terrible <laughs> dictionary. Well, there's your answer right there. You want to know what it is? That's what it is. Okay, so let's um, let's dig into this a little bit further. The word trinity means um, threefold. It comes from the uh, Latin trinitus or Greek uh, is closer to triad, etc. So threefold, and it describes the doctrine of the Godhead. So the Bible nowhere uses the word trinity. This is not a word that you'll find in the Bible. It is not wrong to use modern words to describe biblical concepts. For instance, we talk about the millennium. You don't find the millennium anywhere in the Bible. Uh, the Bible talks about a thousand years, but milli annum means a thousand years. And so we, we often apply modern terms to describe things that the Bible uses, uh, simpler terms to, to, to describe, really. Okay, so the word Trinity that is not found in the Bible, but the word Godhead is. And the Bible describes the Godhead as being three. So if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Plural language. We know that God is more than one. We also find that the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters, and by Him, Jesus Christ, everything was made that was made. Colossians 1 verse 17. And so when we look at creation, when God says, let us make man in our image, we find that there are three persons involved. There is the Father, there is the Son, and there is the Holy Spirit. And so this is where the concept of the word Trinity comes from in describing the Godhead. I usually use the word Godhead to describe it because it's a much less controversial term. Some people get worried like, oh, you're using a word that's not in the Bible. <clears throat> so the word Godhead is a word that no one can argue with. It's in the Bible. Now, an anti-Trinitarian would be somebody who would claim that God is not three, that God is singular. And there are many passages in the, passages in the Bible that say that we serve one God. We are monotheists. We believe in one God. So how do you have three persons who are one? This is something that some people really struggle to, uh, to, to really come to grips with. It was really very simple. If you look further in uh, the Genesis account, which is the foundation for all scripture in chapter two, you find that the Bible says, you know, uh, that a man should leave his father and mother, should cleave to his wife, and those two should become one. Now, when you look at a husband and wife relationship, you've got two persons, but in a sinless hub husband and wife relationship, you've got two persons that are un united in one, in, their, in thought, in action, in, in deed, in every aspect of their lives, they're perfectly united together as a example of the Godhead. So if we look at the Godhead in the Bible, we find that if you go, for instance, to the baptism of John, Great example, not the baptism by John, I should say, the baptism of Jesus by John. Great example of the Godhead here. You have three persons. You have the Father who speaks from heaven. You have the Son who comes up out of the water. And you have the Holy Spirit descending as a dove. Three persons in three different places doing three different things all together at the same time. So you have that in creation. You have it at the baptism of Jesus. You have the same thing as at the resurrection of Jesus, where Jesus says, I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it again. And the Bible says the Father raised Jesus from the dead and the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Then you find that in uh, many places in the Bible, for instance, you know, the Bible talks about the personhood of the Holy Spirit. And so... Uh, the Holy Spirit is described as, you know, using the personal pronoun He. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not tell you things, you know, He has made out. He will tell you things, you know, etc., 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 all the way through there. And so what we find is that there are three distinct persons in the Godhead who make up one God, perfectly united together. Now, the reason I said it was insidious is because people sometimes get stuck on this anti-Trinitarianism, sort of, they, they don't believe in the Godhead anymore, and they sort of get stuck on this little false doctrine and that's all they can bang on about. It's impossible to believe in anti-Trinitarianism without degrading, in some ways, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's... And lowering his status. 
Which is insidious, indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much for answering that, Lyle. If you have a question, give us a call here at Faith FM. Our number is 1-800-324-843. It's 1-800-FAITH-FM. You can ask us anything you like. We'll answer it for question of the day.